I do really believe 100% from every part of me that everyone has the capacity to be able to do the things that they want and not to be held back by the mental baggage that's in our head that we want to push through. Welcome to the Do The Thing podcast. In each episode, we get down and personal with people who go after the things they want to make all their wildest dreams come true. Join us as we unveil and dissect a formula for what it takes to do the thing. Here is your host, Stacey Lauren. Hey everyone, welcome to the Do The Thing podcast. This is your host, Stacey Lauren. So we recently finished the 17-day Do The Thing Dating Dare Challenge and had so much fun. I actually have been asking a few of the people that participated in the challenge to talk to me about how it went for them. And then also, since I have decided that I'm doing another challenge in October, I really wanted to get feedback for how I could improve for the next challenge. And you guys are going to get to meet Natalie. Natalie was really fun during the challenge. She even took the challenge on the road with another friend of hers. And we got to see all of their escapades in the group. And they really brought so much energy and uh, really showed so much of themselves in being able to step out of their comfort zone. And I'm just so excited to have her come on today to talk to me about how the challenge went for her. And I can tell you that this episode does get a little spicy. So if your kids are around and they're small and you don't want them to hear stuff, uh, please go ahead and put your headphones on. But uh, I am just thrilled to be able to introduce Natalie to the show. Hey, Natalie. Hi, Stacy. How are you? I am doing great. I am so beyond excited to talk to you today. <laughs> I'm so excited too. This is actually the only challenge I've ever started and finished. (laughs) Yay! Well, that's what I was hoping. I wanted it to be something that was something that people could do and not have it be hard enough to have it be stretching your comfort zone, but easy enough so that it could be finished without adding a bunch of undue stress. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. It was so fun. Oh, good. Well, I can't wait to start. So let's start with, first of all, why did you decide to do the challenge in the first place? Well, I decided to do the challenge because I am very comfortable in group settings and with a lot of people. I, however, have a hard time one-on-one. So the challenge really um, brought out being able to do the one-on-one thing with people like talking to somebody in the grocery store or I never really, I did not love going into a bar by myself, but I'm going to try it. I promise. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So before you were comfortable doing things in a group and what do you mean by that? Do you mean like you would get with a group of people and then kind of engage in that way or... Yes. So with being a part of now the Peloton community, being able to go into a place with a group of people instead of just going in by myself made all the world of difference in how I'm socially getting myself out there. So I wanted to be comfortable just being able to walk into a place by myself and sit there and have a drink or what have you. (laughs) Yeah, I love that. So when you have the space for that energy of walking in with people that you already know, you're comfortable just kind of going at it and meeting people and things like that. But in terms of you being able to be by yourself and go anywhere, that's where you were still kind of trying to overcome that. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Well, yeah, because that's, that's really hard for people. That's kind of one of the challenges with the challenge was so many people were in different places. Some people couldn't even walk into a gym by themselves. They were terrified. Other people are I'm not trying to give the, I mean, could be on a bar stool dancing without the shirt. No, right. bad, but, but there's definitely a swing of people. And so that was kind of the challenge was making it something for everyone to be able to do. Yes. I mean, it was great. I never imagined in my wildest dreams that I would ever be single at the age of 46 and getting back into the dating scene at 46 is completely different than it was 15 years ago. And so the dating dare challenge was absolutely 
without a doubt, exactly what I needed. Oh, good. And I know, actually, that's funny. That's exactly the age I was because I'm 49 now when I was single at 46. And I remember just it's such a different, it's such a different world. And just being able to be, and I don't know how it is for you, but being in that place where you know who you are and what you want a little bit better and just having more confidence, I think it's just a whole different game than being in your 20s. Yes, whole different ball game with myself plus with the other players that are wanting to play the game with me. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Well, tell me what was your favorite? I know my favorite thing that you posted in the group, but I want to hear what yours is. I'll tell you mine. So mine was when you guys, I think you were in Napa. Yes. And you a picture of you. I love this picture of you, by the way. I feel like this picture you should post everywhere. It's you at the dog park. And I still have a vision of it where you like are with the sign and you just look, it's, you could see that playful curiosity. And I don't know, it just opened up. It kind of gets you into know who you are, your personality, because I've seen you through this challenge and through the videos and things like that. And it's just, it was so fun when you guys shared that with going to where one of the dares was going to the dog park with or without a dog. And you just, you guys just had fun with it. So that was my, I think my favorite thing that I saw from you. (laughs) My favorite thing probably was number one, being able to give a compliment to a complete stranger. I absolutely loved that one. Because I think that everybody deserves a compliment and everybody can be complimented on anything at any given time. But my other favorite one was actually telling people that I'm single. And the way that I was able to do that is first and foremost, I would look at their hand to see if there was any type of a ring on the left finger. And my breakthrough question was, hey, where is your wedding ring today? (laughs) And the response is, oh, I don't have one because I'm single. Oh my gosh, I'm single too. And the conversations that I just struck up by just asking, hey, where's your wedding ring? Really got me to be able to feel comfortable asking people if they were single in a goofy way. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And you made their day, I bet, regardless of how it turned out. It probably had yeah. got a smile on their face too. It did. And, you know, um, since the dating chair challenge has been over, I've actually used that line three other times and have I produced a couple of phone numbers from it. So yeah, it's, it works. I love that. That's so fun. Oh, I should give you another challenge. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We should we should get it to like 30 times that you do that and then measure your results. <laughs> oh yes, I accept that challenge. <laughs> yes. I, I will start today. Like we talked about before we got on, and I didn't think I would actually bring it up in this interview, but yeah, how I like attributed sales to dating. And that is a that's a and that's what's so cool about the parallel of the two of understanding the the concept of sales and the numbers and not taking things personally and just having fun as you go along with things. And then to do something like that with dating and just make it fun. We're not saying not to be genuine and all that stuff. Like you're getting there, but these are, you're making it almost natural where you don't even have to think about talking to someone after you've done the 30 times. (laughs) I love it. Yes. Dating is exactly like the sales. You have to be marketable first with that first impression And then you have to bring them in and your looks are going to be the first thing that you're going to sell. And then your personality has to reel them in. And if you have a great personality, they're going to stay and they're going to buy the product with dinner and a movie. (laughs) If the personality is horrible, they're going to say, thank you. Next, I'm going to shop somewhere else. So tell me, what else do you think? How do you think you might have grown during the, the challenge? Oh, goodness. I would say the growth that I had, I, (laughs) my previous marriage was definitely very, very, if you can say vanilla in your podcast, I was a very humble, very submissive type of spouse. And with the Dating Dare Challenge, I have been able to open up my views on a lot of things 
and I'm finally learning who I am and what I want. Mm -hmm. And just being able to get out there and have fun, number one. Number two, just learning what I want has been a humongous, humongous life altering thing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, what do you think helped you, helped you learn what what you want? Was there anything that you could think of that was the thing? Yeah. I would say from day one, when you started talking about like self-care and how do you want to be and what are you doing to take care of yourself? Because we can't take care of anybody else unless we're taking care of ourselves and our needs. So through that, I know for a fact that I want to be number one in any type of relationship. And then number two, I want somebody who is absolutely as fun as I am. And doing the little challenges, I knew that depending upon their response to me would would either hook me or not. So I learned that I want somebody who's going to need to match my energy. And sometimes I'm too much and that's okay. But each of those little challenges brought out a different part of my personality and I loved it. Yay. Were there any of the challenges that you didn't, you didn't want to do or didn't do? <laughs> yes. Oh, Stacy, <laughs> this is going to be hilarious. So we were in Napa, Sue Suarez and I, we were in Napa and one of the, the dares was go into a bar by yourself mm-hmm. and sit down at the bar. Oh my gosh. We drove to six different bars and I was like, nope, I'm not going into that one. And Sue's idea was, okay, I'm going to drop you off. You go in and then I'm going to go to a different bar and then we'll meet back up. And I was like, I'm going to be on foot. Are you kidding me? And so we decided that I was not going to do the challenge, but Sue was. So Sue parked at this cute little club or bar and she went in and I stayed in the car and she just saddled up to that bar and she ordered her drink and the the bartender said, what are you up to? And she said, oh, I'm on a girl's weekend. And he said, well, where are the other girls? And she told him about the challenge and he said, well, where is she? Oh, she's still in the car. So the owner of the bar Literally, because Sue had left the car running, he literally opened the driver's side door and I thought I was being kidnapped. (laughs) This complete stranger is just opening the driver door and I'm thinking, ah, he's going to get in and take me away. And he goes, are you friends with the blonde inside? And I said, yes. He goes, get in here. You're going to do this challenge too. So... (laughs) It was was hilarious. Oh my gosh. That is so funny. I love how they're, I think that's what I really was wanting is people to get so absorbed with like what was happening that, that, that it just kind of, you don't even know where it's going to go from there. Yeah. It was great. That's so cool. And I loved seeing you guys take it on the road. I thought that was, it was so, it it just added a whole nother fun element to it because you were sharing your travels and your journey with us, which was just so cool. (laughs) <laughs> and the dog park one, I don't necessarily love dogs. And this dog park had nobody at it except for a gentleman who was loading up two dogs. And Allie Goldstein, is she like chased after the guy, can we borrow your dogs? <laughs> and he's like, no. And he took off. It was hilarious. <laughs> That's so great. And I love that you guys got the fact of it being something to have fun with and not want, not needing any kind of outcome. I think some people went into it and I really tried to speak to that because I didn't want people to have an outcome. Because to me, this 14 or 17 day challenge was not to meet the man of your dreams or to go get into a relationship or anything like that. It, that will happen eventually, but it was really just figure out what kind of what you said, figuring out what you want, getting into yourself, loving yourself, and then also stretching your comfort zone. So regardless of who you meet outside, you're able to go up to them at any point. Or if someone comes up to you, you're able to respond. Absolutely. If anyone met their soulmate during the seven days, I'm going to want to talk to them and see how it happened. (laughs) (laughs) 
Well, I did hear there are a few people and I haven't talked to everyone yet. I'm not going to do this with everyone, obviously, but I've emailed a few people and they've said they've met someone already. But again, that wasn't the goal. And I think if I mentioned to you right before getting on that, I just started that challenge 75 card today. Have you heard of that, by the way? Have. Yeah. Yeah. And so with that, they don't call it, it's not a losing weight challenge. It's not a, it's a self-discipline challenge. And then all these other things that happen to people losing weight and sleeping better and all that, that's just side effects. And so that's kind of what I see as the dating dare challenge. It's, and I don't know what that is, whether it's a comfort zone challenge or what the actual thing is yet, but all those other things, those are side effects, meeting someone or doing something for yourself or whatever it is. Yes. And just getting you out of your comfort zone and out of your little box that you've placed yourself in and just getting outside the box. I like that. And maybe there is no box. (laughs) Oh, I like that. And actually it's funny because I always use the out of the box words and I'm actually... have this book here. I'm just reading this book right now. Relentless. That's good. Oh, I forgot we share a common book. I saw you posting about Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. And I was actually, I think that's why I told you I'm like your twin. Cause like literally at that time, that was the book. I think I listened to it on Audible three or four times. And that was the book that really, really helped me. Life changing. I listened to the Audible over the last couple of weeks. Well, I finished it a couple of weeks ago. Then I opened the book and I'm starting the challenges now. And I have just been pounding away at my keyboard. And I think that I'm ready to tell my story in print. So however that looks, I think that it's going to happen. That's so cool. I remember when I first I first started listening to that book and I started referring it to people. And then all of a sudden he uses the word pussy a lot. And I had never used that word in my life ever, not once. And I remember hearing it and my virgin ears were like, oh my God, I just referred this book to so many people and he's using this word. Now I comfortably use the word pussy. But back then it was just so funny because I'm, oh my God, what did I just do? I just told all these people to read this book. <laughs> that is hilarious. I still cannot use the word. Word, and I refer to my area as my biscuit. <laughs> and so people just, I mean, they just laugh because I can't use the word. <laughs> I love it. Well, did you listen to the episode with Genesis yet with the, on the, on my podcast? So she, I'll, I'll send it to you. It's, she's talking about, she's one of the people that helped kind of like yeah. in that side up for me, but, but yeah, but she kind of like gets you all into being able to just be comfortable with all that stuff. But anyway, no, it's fun. No, this book, so relentless. That's actually, I just, and this, I'm reading this because in 75 hard, you have to read, and I'm used to listening to books, but you have to read 10 pages a day. So this is the book I picked, but he talks Perfect. about that. Not There's no box. And I love I love that idea. So I'm playing with that right now in my head. I'm like, oh, there is no box. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to need to order that book. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. So what else? Oh, I will tell you, I'm uh, sorry, we're going personal now, but with Can't Hurt Me, what I did realize was I also needed to then listen to some mind body books because he's so hardcore and it's so good. And it was exactly what I needed, but then I almost needed to balance it with the other side. And then I picked, now I'm in the middle where I can pull from either way. So that was a really cool kind of like observation was when you drink the Kool-Aid, you could drink it, but then find where you fit in type thing. I had a really dysfunctional childhood and a a horrible family life. And I needed, David Goggins says, you have to get over things in order to move forward. And with the divorce and my ex-husband handing me the pink slip out of the blue is what I call it. It really, really knocked me down. I would say a hundred flights of stairs but I can see myself coming back up and out. And I'm just, I have a new zest for life. And when I look back, I realize, and it's women like you, Stacy, who have spoken into my life with the challenge and with the Facebook groups and social media that I know for a fact that I am worth it. And I am going to be more than okay in the single girl life. Yeah. That's amazing. And I think, and I know, I don't know if this happened for you, but when you get divorced, it 
you get, you almost forget about your childhood for a while and whatever happened. But then when the divorce happens, if you relive everything, cause you're going through that abandonment or that, all of that stuff again. Yeah. Rejection. The word that keeps coming to my mind is rejection. The childhood trauma rejected by my father, rejected by my first husband and rejected by the second. And then I have a hard time. Well, I'm out there and I'm dating. I don't want to say that I'm not dating, but there's always that fear of rejection. What did I do wrong this time? And, but I'm kind of in it for me now. I'm in it to win it. And I don't care who rejects me because as long as I love myself and I'm not re- rejecting me, then it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. So, yeah. That just makes me so happy to hear that. That is like almost the number one thing I also wanted from the challenge. And I don't know if you remember me sharing, but it was rejection. What was that guy? I forgot that guy. I was obsessed with him when I first started, but I followed this guy that did a hundred days of rejection. Yes. Yes. And he did like videos every day and he asked, he went to different places just to get rejected, just to show that most people are scared of rejection, so they don't do the thing. But if you can show that, okay, so what? Get rejected. And like, you're still here. I'm still here. Yeah, and I'm still think, here too. Yeah. And I think it was, was it Dr. Nancy? I can't remember who, oh wait, maybe it was, I don't remember which expert it was that said it, but it's almost, the rejection is almost like an automatic pre-screener. It's, Thanks for saving me time. <laughs> that is good. Thank you for saving me the time and energy. Yeah. And then actually Genesis said rejection is, oh my God, what was it? Is God's protection. I think something like that, like almost that same concept of just being able to get just, it just really helps you get more. It's yeah. Expending less energy basically on what you want. So I dig it. Are you going to do more challenges? So that's my net. Thanks for gearing me up there. You're good. (laughs) So intuitive. I love it. No, exactly. I'm working on one, right? I'm not working. I'm deciding how I want to do the next one. I'm probably going to do a longer one and I'd love to get your feedback and do less dares. So it's not, so people have more chance during the week to do the dare. Cause I noticed, I think you guys were really good with being able to do them when you were gone and you're kind of like doing it together. Unless I could figure out a way for people to do that. But there were some people that had a hard time keeping up. And then you know how that is when you can't do it. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, never mind then. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm curious, what do you think about? Like, if I do do another one, do you have any thoughts on like the dares or any of that stuff? I'd be loved. I love the idea of like letting them be longer. So one weekend to do a certain dare or one week to do a dare and make it a good six to eight weeks long. And number one, trying to find out who you are, learning about yourself, and then learning about other people. And I will tell you, Stacey, one thing, and you can use this or you can not. But through this dare, I have found that I really, really enjoy writing. So today I jumped back up on Bumble and Hinge and I wrote my little bio and shared it with my girlfriends. But I also started writing about a week and a half ago, every other day, at least 50 words. Nice. And I think I've decided that I need to find an outlet and some type of publishing to write erotica. Mm -hmm. So I have been writing and putting my thoughts down and I've been having a couple of friends read it and they are enjoying the hell out of it. So I dared myself to do this because of your dare. And I I cannot thank you enough. That is so cool. It's like you're, you're like, I've been unleashed. (laughs) Yes. The beast has been unleashed. (laughs) And she's very excited. I must Oh my God. Could you name your book that the beast has been unleashed? (laughs) Oh yes. Or how about the biscuit has been unleashed? (laughs) Oh, I can't wait to read it. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm definitely going to start looking to see where I can get it out to. Absolutely. Yeah. And then if you're interested, no one took me up on this dare and it wasn't an actual dare. It was bonus dare, but the starting your own podcast, that could be fun to do alongside of it, even just as you like to keep yourself accountable. And I could help you kind of guide you with that too, if you're interested, just so you know. Wow. That sounds exciting. <laughs> 
So let me know and then I'll connect okay. you to the podcast platform guy. It's just you either recording your thoughts, which I think you should do. I've seen you talk and I think you, I think it should be your thoughts, honestly. And then maybe sometimes you can invite someone on to talk with you, but, but yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. Send yeah. that to me. Okay. Yeah, I will make a note. So yeah. And Thank then I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll send you the Adair because that we were, me and Adam, the podcast platform guy, we did a separate interview. I think it's only 30 minutes. You could just listen to it and it, it explores the dare a little bit more, but Perfect. yeah, that would be fun. So yay, I'm excited. So erotica is coming out of this challenge. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. I uh, shared one of them with a gentleman and I have to tell you, he just went crazy. Wow. And I was the recipient of his delicious craziness. <laughs> He read it. So how did you, uh, what did you think about the experts that were on? Like, did you get to listen? I know I saw you, I think I saw you at most of them. Like, what did you think about that? I loved all of them. Now, Genesis was my favorite (laughs) because she is very sexy and sensual. And just being able to talk in that kind of a forum, I really felt like I could be myself and there was no judgment. Mm. Um, So the two of you together are a great team. Oh, good. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Is there anything you feel like you were missing or you would have liked to see more of? I think that less talking from participants, maybe, and more just talking from you guys on actual... Well, no, you did give dating advice. But the dating advice of how do you know, or like, what are the red flags? Or how do you know that there is a true spark? And should you be waiting for intimacy for the third or fourth date, if it's going to be a long lasting relationship that I think I need some of those questions answered myself. <laughs> yeah, no, those are, those are really good questions. So maybe if, if there's questions and answers, it would be like, that could be a separate thing from the actual interview, or maybe that's even on writing, like in Facebook or something. And then the actual talk is the hour or whatever, the Zoom kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. No, I, I like that. That's really good. And then anything else that you think would have been good? And especially if it's longer next time. No, I think that when you created that Facebook page and let people, you know, talk in and out of it and the dares and just how they made people feel and what they were comfortable with and not, and then the advice that would come. I think it was an amazing, I don't think you should change anything. Thank you. And what was the hardest dare for you besides the bar one? What was the hardest dare for you, like physically for you to have to overcome, like mentally, maybe? I would definitely, I would go back to the bar one. I personally, I feel like in this, in this world, we're all about the physical, a small, a skinny, blonde, and, and I'm not skinny and I'm not blonde. And I really feel that it's hard for me to go into a place and put myself out there because I have, but I have delicious curves. So just being able to walk into a place like that by myself without fidgeting, that is the the hardest thing I have had to overcome. And it's a continual thing that I have to overcome. Gotcha. What, What do you think could help you? Maybe like a little earpiece. Was somebody talking to me <laughs> and telling me, your curves are delicious, but head up, shoulders back. Oh Get my that God. Crown. I have something. Okay. I have one. I have it. So it's an app. <laughs> I love it. I'm telling you right now, what is it called? It's like, so it could even be, I don't know if you want it to be in your voice or you could go on Fiverr and have some sexy voice record it, but it's called uh-huh. Think Up. And it's T-H-I-N-K-U-P. And it helps you cultivate a positive mindset using affirmations and self-talk. I haven't used it yet, but I have a bunch of people that I know that use it. And they do it in their own voice. And then you listen to like, you you plug in whatever you wanted to say, and then you listen to it. But I'm just even thinking, if you don't want it in your own voice, you could have some sexy guy on Fiverr do it. (laughs) Yes, that's just a little earpiece listening to it as I'm straight. And I think that would be amazing. I have a suggestion. Are you open to it? Yes. 
Okay. I think with everything, it is flexing the muscle. So it's literally, and that's why I gave you the advice of doing, I can't remember the number I gave you for the the ring, 30. but yeah. I think it's flexing the muscle and you can always combine that with the 30 if you want. But like, it's the more you do it, I'm telling you a hundred percent, the more comfortable it gets. And so that would be, I think the number one thing I would think. Perfect. And I think I might do it this afternoon yeah. and just go into a bar slash restaurant and sit at the bar and have lunch. That's great. Yes. You know, I, I don't remember if I told the story in the challenge. This came from because a friend of mine had told me one of her really good friends met a guy by herself at a bar. Did I, did I share that story? No. Okay, this is a great story. So she... Okay. I want to remember it. Cause I remember it motivated me because it was before I had met my boyfriend and I remember hearing it and I was like, Oh my gosh, that's so cool. And it's not so much about the bar specifically that I loved. It's about following your instinct. And so anyway, she's at this bar, she's into sports. So she's watching sports and then she's talking to this guy there and they're just talking. They're both at separate tables. And then she's like, okay, I guess the game was over. And she's like, okay, bye. And then she said goodbye. She gets in her car. She drives all the way home And she's like, that guy was really cool. I'm never going to see him again if I don't go back there and ask for his number. So she drove all the way back. He was still there. She got his number. And it's like two and a half years later, and they're still together. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. That is really crazy. Yeah, it's like a real true story. It's like a really good friend of hers. And I remember just hearing that. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So it's not just the bar thing that I loved. It's just about going for what you want. And if you didn't go for it the first time, like you can make up for it (laughs) and go for it again. I love that story. (laughs) I want you to share that story in my new Facebook group. (laughs) That was great. Yeah, no, for sure. I love your new, I was talking to you about it before. I love your new Facebook group. I feel like it's, we're getting to see inside your brain and then you, everyone loves it. And so then they're getting their own, they're getting, they're all getting their, they're okay. You're giving them permission. That's what it is. You're giving them the permission to be who they are and what they are. And you're letting them explore that through this group. Yes. I 100% agree with you. Yeah. Because I think it's it's so rare that people have the space to be able to be given that permission to just be exactly as you are. And we're not going to, we're just going to love you for it, basically. And for the first time in my entire life, I am that person. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So cool. Yeah. Love it. So what would be your number one piece of advice for people before they do the challenge? We'll talk about that first. How would you advise them to approach it or to do it or not do it or whichever way you want to go with this question? I would say my biggest piece of advice is to say yes to everything and no to nothing. Don't discredit any of the challenges and just say yes to everything that is set before you because you never know where it's going to take you. Hmm. Yeah. I like that. That's so good. I was actually just talking to someone about that earlier and it's kind of sometimes you just have to focus on the one thing in front of you. And because if you think too much about the end goal of what you need to do, then it's almost like that's where that analysis paralysis can come into play. But if you focus on like the one thing, like if it's the dare or whatever, then, then you follow that and let the energy like guide you. Then you just, you wouldn't even have expected to where it took you kind of like you, right? When you signed up for this dating dare challenge, if I was like, Oh, you know what, Natalie, you're probably going to end up writing erotica and have a published book. And then all of a sudden now, who knows what's going to happen, but, and it could end up being a movie. I don't know, whatever it is, but you just don't know what it is that you're going to end up doing. And that's, what's cool is when you focus on the one thing in front of you. Yes. And if I can share, if you have some time, if I can just share a little bit about my story, I was married to my second husband for 14 years And we lived a very, well, I mean, we dove deep into the Baptist church, we'll just say. And throughout all of that time, we were, I thought we were best friends until the day he asked for the divorce last year. And we had, it completely broke me. I never even thought that a soul could feel as broke as I did. And then I just, I made sure that I had a little piece of paper by me at all times. And I called it my little silver linings of hope. And every hour I had a little alarm 
And I made sure that I wrote down something with that hour that made me feel joy. And so as months went on, my book started to get thicker, my little notebook, and I knew I was going to be okay. I joined some Peloton singles groups. I came to Arizona. I lived in Colorado, you know, for the last 45 years of my life. And I came to Arizona for a spa week just by myself. I spent Thanksgiving by myself. And then I came back with Peloton singles people on Memorial Day weekend. And I thought, I'm going to move here. Someday I'm going to move here. And then I came back the first week of June and I started looking at apartments. I signed a lease two days later. I went home to Colorado. I packed up my entire life and I moved the following Saturday. Wow. Without a job, I'd had a couple of interviews. I moved everything. I live here by myself. I start a brand new job on Monday and next week, Monday. Yeah. Next week. And I just started saying yes. I said yes to every interview opportunity. I've gone out on several dates and I've said yes to them. And I just am saying yes to everything. And it is opening up a completely different life for me. That's amazing. I I lived in Cortez and I, I made my new job is a $25,000 increase wow. per year. And just, I'm just saying yes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm curious because this is the ultimate in doing the thing, right? It's like being able to just up and move out of, out of just pure, like a feeling that you have of where you are meant to be. And I'm just wondering, so besides the part of saying yes, is there anything else that helped you? Did you go through anything else that was like, okay, why not? Or what really um, got you to do it? The thing that really got me to do it, Stacy, is that my ex-husband, two months after he asked for the divorce, I found out he had actually been having an affair. Mm. He's a very prominent businessman. We were a very well-known couple in our small community. And she, the girl happened to be 35 and he's 62 and I'm 46. And every single day, there was not a place or time that mattered I would be asked, are you okay? I'm so sorry that happened to you. And I had to get away from that. I had to go somewhere where nobody knows my story. And I had to show positivity and the growth through that. And Stacey, um, one last thing I'm going to share. I have had, and I might cry, (laughs) I have had probably nine to 10 women reach out to me privately and tell me, Natalie, The things that you're saying are what I'm feeling Mm. and I'm going through this and I'm going through that. What's your advice? Can we talk? Can we, can we FaceTime? And I think my story and the way I've reacted to it is helping. And that's what I want to do. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so beautiful. Yeah. It's amazing when the things that you go through the things that are going to be able to impact people and the way that you handle it. Because if you took it one way, you couldn't even be where you are now, right? Like you you couldn't have... And granted, it's okay to go under the covers and whatever for a little bit, right? But then then realizing like, okay, this isn't how I want to live. And now because you took that stance, now you're impacting other people, what decisions they may make. Yep. And I love every bit of it. Yay. It's amazing to me how many people think they have to stay in that situation when the fear of of getting out of it. And it's almost like, thank you to him for for giving you the pink slip, right? Because you might have yes. not known. It's just unbelievable. And I have not had to walk on one single eggshell since I moved in by myself, unless I happen to drop an egg on the floor. <laughs> and I really dig that. I love it. <laughs> thank so. you. Appreciate it so right. much. Thank you for your Sounds time. Great. All right. Have a wonderful day. Okay, you too. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Do The Thing podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. But even more, we hope you'll be inspired to do the thing. Do you have a burning question on doing the thing that you'd like answered? How about an inspiring Do The Thing story of your own that you'd like to share? We'd love to hear all about it. Just leave us a voice message at do the thing.callcast.co or email us at hello at do the thing podcast.com.